Hey guys, Justin here with AmericanMuscle.com, and today we're taking a closer look at and installing the sequential projector headlights available for all 2015 through 2017 Mustangs, along with all 2018 and newer Shelbys. Now these particular lights are gonna offer the matte black housing topped off with a crystal clear lens and some very unique lighting. Now, you should be checking out these options for your S550. Again, if you are looking to go in a completely different direction from the factory lights, and would like to add some of those unique accent lights with the bonus sequential turn signals and basically totally change up the front end in the process. Now talking features here with the projectors on the table with me today, and I think the biggest is gonna be the wild departure from the stock headlights in just about every way, right? Gone are those factory iconic tri-bar gills, if you wanna call them that, and now they've been replaced by two separate LED bars that run across the bottom and the top of the new headlights, accented by this little angle or arrow, if you wanna call it that, up top. Now, these lights, these DRLs, are gonna act as a daytime running light, hence DRL, of course, but you are getting that bonus sequential turn signal functionality, and that's gonna pulsate that top bar there in amber whenever your turn signals have been activated. Now, when the turn signals are off, those bars or those DRLs are going to illuminate in a bright white, basically whenever the car is turned on, parking lights, headlights, things like that. And I really can't overstress just how distinct of a look these are gonna provide to your S550 after the install. Certainly gonna help separate your ride from the rest. And in fact, don't take my word for it. Feel free to check out some of the customer submitted images on the product page if you haven't done so already to get a sense of what these lights are all about when installed. Now getting into your construction here, again, you're gonna find the combination of, in this case, a matte black housing, working with a crystal clear polycarbonate lens. It is impact resistant. And again, I like that combination of the black housing with the clear lens. Still gonna deliver more of a sinister look, more of aggressive look, if you wanna call it that. Uh, but at the same time, it's still gonna give you plenty of visibility here out of the lights and maintain that DOT and SAE stamp of approval. And that's gonna make these lights legal for use in all 50 states. Also like pointing out a few things here, guys, these lights are adjustable. So after you get everything installed, totally dial them in depending on your ride height. But one thing I do also wanna point out is that you will need to transfer over your LEDs and the ballasts from the stock headlights over to the new LED options here. Um, just to get everything up and running for the very first time. Price point for the headlights will live in that low to mid $800 range. Certainly puts these in line with a lot of other, I would say mid to entry level S550 headlights, but at the same time, still are gonna be far more affordable than going with some of your other more premium options from a company like Alpha Rex or Morimoto. So at the end of the day, feel free to check out the rest of our selection here at AM before making your final decision. All right, guys, last but not least, let's talk install. And according to the site, you're looking at a middle of the road, two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, taking you about three hours or so to complete from start to finish, simply just because you will need to remove that front bumper in order to access your stock lights, remove them, of course, and then get the new lights in in reverse order. Very small amount of wiring he needed here for those DRLs, nothing crazy, of course, but uh, to give you a better idea of just how this all shakes out in the garage or driveway, check out our detailed walk through and tool breakdown. For this install, you will need an impact, 3 8 to quarter inch adapter if necessary, T20 Torx bit, 7, 8, 10, and 13 millimeter sockets. In our case, a Phillips head screwdriver, small flathead screwdriver, a clip removal tool, and wire strippers and crimpers. Also not shown here, but we use for our install would be male spade connectors and T-taps, as well as a jack and jack stands to reach the underside of the vehicle. What's up guys, today we're gonna to be installing some headlights on our Mustang, but before we do that, we're gonna send you to watch a short video on how to uninstall your factory setup, and we'll see you when you get back. So for this install, we're gonna to have to get the car up in the air a little bit, and we're gonna to have to remove the front bumper. It's a pretty simple process, I'm gonna walk you through it. So let's get started. I'm gonna start by using my clip tool to remove the clips that hold the upper rad cover on, and I'll just pull these out and pull the rad cover off. The 
So with my rad cover out of the way, I can take my 8 mil socket and remove the six 8 mil screws along the top of the bumper, but don't forget the 7 mil screws hiding underneath the weather strip here, and I'm just gonna use a 7 mil socket to get those out. Now I need to pull back my inner fender liner here up against the front bumper. There are four clips here on the inside of the wheel well. One of ours is missing, but just imagine that it's there. And there's two at the bottom that I'll have to remove. And then I can pull my wheel well liner back far enough to gain access to the bolt that is behind the liner on the corner of the front bumper. I'm just gonna use my clip tool once again to pull the clips out, and then I can pull the liner back. So back here at the corner of this bumper, there is a plastic bracket that mounts the fender to the bumper, and there's a seven millimeter screw that, it, that goes through the two and attaches the bumper into the fender. And what you're gonna have to do is take a seven millimeter socket on your ratchet to remove it. Now, our bumper has been off so many times that that hardware is missing, but all you need is a seven millimeter socket and ratchet, and it'll come right out. Now I'm just gonna repeat this exact same process on the other side of the vehicle, and once again, remove the seven millimeter screw here at the corner of the bumper. Now you can pull your fender liner back once again and remove the seven millimeter screw right here. With our fender liners pulled back and the corner of our bumper unbolted, now we can unhook our fog lights and turn signals as these are going to be coming off with the bumper when we remove it from the car. So I'm just gonna unplug my connectors and pull them off the back of the lights. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side. So next, I'm gonna use a combination of a clip removal tool and a seven millimeter socket on my impact to remove the four screws and two clips on the bottom of the belly pan, but I'm gonna leave it attached to the front bumper so everything comes off in one piece. All right, let's go with the screws first. So now you're going to want to very carefully pop the corners of the front bumper out. Make sure not to damage these tabs as you will need them to reinstall the bumper. And with both of the corners popped off now, we can remove the front bumper. So now that I have my bumper pulled off, I have access to all the hardware for the headlight. I'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket for the top and bottom 10 millimeter screws and a 13 millimeter socket for the outer screw. So now I can remove my headlight and unplug the connector. Alrighty guys, welcome back. Now that we've shown you how to remove your factory setup, we're over here on the table because there's a few things we need to do in order to get our new lights ready to go on the car. So what we're going to do is take our ballast and our bulb out of our factory unit, swap it over to our new setup, and then we can get it on the car. So we'll start with our ballast get it loose, we'll grab our T20 Torx bit on our impact and run out our four screws holding our ballast in. And you do want to keep track of your screws because we will be reusing them. Now that we've got that loose, we'll come back to our bulb cover here. We're going to give that a turn counterclockwise to go ahead and open that up. A lot of times these tend to get kind of stuck in here a little bit, especially if they've never been opened. But once you get it turned, 
just pop it out. As you can see, our bulb is a little bit worse for wear. Uh, many installs, many times taking this apart has worn down our retainers, but yours should have a retainer ring and a metal clip holding it in with two screws. And you can go ahead and pull this bulb out just like so, even with the retainer in, should just pop right out. We want to pull that straight out and not risk damaging our glass or anything like that. We can go ahead and unplug our bulb. Go ahead and set that down. And we'll come back to our ballast here. We'll go ahead, pull that back. And we're gonna pull our plug wire back through our housing. So we're gonna be swapping that. As for this plug here, we're gonna go ahead and remove that from our ballast. We'll use a small flathead screwdriver to pop this retainer clip off and just kind of wedge it out like that. It should unplug itself just like so. We'll go ahead and set our ballast down. Now we can set our factory setup aside. So now we'll come to our new setup here. We're gonna remove our bulb cover, which on these is just a rubber slip cover. So we'll go ahead and just pop that right off. And you'll notice it has a new retainer ring in it. So we'll just give that a grab and a turn counterclockwise, pull that out. We'll go ahead, just push down on this clip, open that up. And we can go ahead and get this onto our new bulb. Now your bulb, or onto our bulb rather. Now you notice your bulb has a couple little slots for indents here. Go ahead and slide our ring on. We'll start to get that lined up. You may need to move it around a bit to get it in there. And once it's lined up, go ahead and snap it into place and that's secure. Now we can go ahead and get our ballast in place. So we'll reach in here and grab our connector, get that plugged in just like so. Make sure that clips in. We're gonna take our headlight wire and run that back through our housing. And it can be a little bit tricky in here. You kinda of just need to reach in and find the open slot. And once you get it through, you can grab it from your headlight bulb area. Go ahead and pull that all the way through so you can access it. Then we can go ahead and set our ballast on the mounting tabs here. Now it is oriented specifically. Just have to find the right orientation here. Go ahead and lay that in place. So now we'll go ahead and grab our T20 torque screws that we took out of our factory setup. We'll go ahead and get those started into the bolt holes here. And now that we have those started, we'll go ahead and grab our T20 Torx bit on our impact again and run these in. Now remember, you are going into plastic uh, bolt holes, so there's no need to go crazy, go super tight. Nice and snug will do. Once we have that done, we'll come back to our bulb. We'll go ahead and plug our bulb in like so. So then once we have this in, we'll get it seated. It's a bit tricky at first. Line up your tabs. So once we have it set, we'll go ahead and give it a quarter turn-ish clockwise. Lock that into place. Then we'll go ahead and reinstall our rubber boot over top of it. So these headlights do come with additional features that we're gonna to need to tap this yellow wire on our headlight into our turn signal harness. Now your kit does come with inline taps, but I found it's a lot easier and more secure to use male spade connectors and T-taps on our harness. 
So we'll go ahead and add our male spade connector to our yellow wire here. And that is as simple as sliding it into place here. Once we have it set, we'll go ahead and grab our wire strippers and crimpers and crimp our connector onto our wire, like so. Give that a nice squeeze. Then you wanna give it a little bit of a tug afterwards and make sure your connection is secure. You can go ahead and repeat these same steps for your other side. So now we've got our headlights prepped, we can go ahead and get them installed onto the vehicle. So first, we're gonna grab our factory harness from our vehicle side. We're gonna plug that right into our factory style connector on our headlight just like so. Then we'll go ahead and get this lined up and in place. We have our locator up top, as well as on the side. Once that's in, go ahead and grab our hardware. We get our two 10 millimeter bolts back in the front here, top and bottom. And we'll get our 13 millimeter bolt in the side. And we'll go ahead and get this one installed. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So now we can grab our 13 mil socket and get this one tightened down. And we'll grab our 10 mil socket and get our front mounting bolts tightened down. So now we're gonna grab our brown connector here. That is our turn signal connector. Look for the blue wire on our driver's side here. We're gonna go ahead and install our T-tap, our spade connector into our T-tap. And that just simply plugs right in just like that. So now once you have everything done for this side, you can go ahead and repeat these same steps for your other side. Now on the passenger side, the wire you're looking for is the white wire coming off of the turn signal harness. So now we can go ahead and get our bumper back in place. We'll grab it here by the outside edges. We'll go ahead and set it on our locator dowels at the top of our bumper here. Make sure those all get lined up and seated. And that'll hold everything in place up here while we get the rest of our bumper situated. Now we can go ahead and get the end of our bumper located flush with our fender here, back in its slot. And then remember, yours from factory should have the screw connecting these two together. Ours, again, is no longer with us. Once we have that done on this side, we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. So now we can go ahead and get our connectors for our lights on our bumper back into place. And this is the same exact process for both sides. So go ahead and grab our turn signal one here. Get that plugged back in. Connector for our light stays plugged in. And we'll grab our marker light connector, that is the gray one here. Make sure that's good. Followed by our fog light connector. Once we have all those done, we can go ahead and get our fender liner back into place. We can begin getting our push pins back in. And we'll go ahead and start on the outside of our fender liner here. Get these two in. We'll go ahead and get our chassis one in over here. And we have our one down here that we'll go ahead and get in. This one's pretty worn out on ours. It, connects your splash guard to your fender liner. And then from the factory, you should also have one on the bottom, and ours is no longer with us. So now we'll go ahead and get our push pins and our screws back into our splash guard. We'll start with our two push pins here on the outside. That one in, this one. And we'll grab our seven mil socket and run our seven mil screws back in. We'll start with our two middle ones here. So now we can go ahead and reinstall of our eight millimeter screws along the top of our bumper. Grab our eight mil socket and run these back in. So 
So now we can go ahead and lift up our weather stripping at the edge of our bumper here and go ahead and reinstall what should be a seven millimeter screw from the factory. Ours are Phillips head as replacements because ours are no longer with us. So we'll go ahead and get this in place. Set that back down. Then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our upper radiator cover. Get that in place. Make sure all of our holes line up. I'll reinstall all of our push pins here. That'll do it. Alrighty guys, that about wraps up our review and install of our sequential projector series headlights and matte black housings and clear lenses for your 15 to 17 Mustang and 18 to current Mustang GT350 and GT500. Thanks for watching and as always, for everything Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.